one and I stand on that You and me, babe, that's black on black We've been talking politics all day. <laughs> I got a couple of stories that I want to uh, talk about. First of all, we work uh, just filed for bankruptcy. And I think um, after watching the documentary, I'm not mad. $47 billion this company was valued at. More than Twitter, $47 billion. It went from uh, all the rave to bankruptcy in a short period of time. This was 2019, valued at $47 billion. Um, I feel like we work in several other modern tech businesses, including maybe even Twitter, valuations out of the wazoo based on absolutely nothing, based on absolutely nothing. Now, we work could have been like McDonald's, a real estate company, but it wasn't that. So what are we paying for exactly? What? Why? Who's valuing these uh, companies? And now I feel like we're going to have to get real about what, what companies are doing and tech companies in particular and what value they really have. I don't think people should just be able to put these numbers on it. Trump is in court right now because he valued his real estate company. But I'm like, who let him get away with that? All right. Y'all start. That's, that's the problem, Karen, is that people have just gotten away with it for so long that nobody's ever checked it. People say, oh, well, it's a harmless crime or a victimless crime. But no, a lot of people who put money into, into WeWork and lost money on WeWork stock feel like that they're absolutely victims. Part of the issue with WeWork is that it was a marketing scheme, just like for all intents and purposes, Trump as a politician is a marketing scheme. You know what I mean? So like, you got to think about it. Him as a politician, he actually is just a racist game show host and not an actual poli- not an actual like real politician, right? Or leader. But, or leader. Or a good businessman. Or a good businessman. So, business like, like, and the crazy part about it is like, you know, um, the we work, they just he was like, Oh, we're a technology company. Nah, bro, you sell space, you lease space in a in a shared in a shared office, right? But they let Adam get away with it. Like, and all he had all that foreign money. And there are a handful of people during that time that really had outsized influence over the entire tech industry. And now we have it. So here's the game, right? So I, I hear y'all on all of that. However, uh, there are some people who look at that we were doing and like, oh, that was that was cool because they made money off of it when the when the sale happened, when the like immediate having to get it to somebody else kind of transfer situation, they made money. Um, and so they're like, oh no, this works. Also, this guy's viewed as a successful business owner, um, because of before that fact, right? Is that he had enough charisma and enough belief in whatever he had to make go out and make somebody else believe in it to a billion dollar level. Um, dump tons of money into it and then fail. And in the world of finance and business, it is viewed as successful to fail. And I think that in, in where you fail at, right? So there was things, yeah. there was smart moves that they felt like he made and then dumb moves that they felt like he made. And for some reason, when you are fair skinned, uh, people will forget all about the dumb moves you made for the, for the very smart ones you made if they made a dollar off of it, right? Now I think that's the key. So was it a fail in some sense? Yes. Whose failure, right, is where what we don't talk about enough. Like, whose failure was it? It wasn't he is not viewed as a failure for what he did. People like SoftBank and people who took this major chance, they're also not viewed as a failure either because they fell all the time. That's a part of the game. It's like, oh, I believe in that. Give some money to you. Oop, lost that. Oop, okay. Like, the level of money that they're playing at is not viewed as a loss for them. Bankruptcy is not viewed as a fail. It is viewed as a smart business move to salvage and save yourself from losing all of your money. Now, the way we were taught, I would say, I can't speak for y'all, but in the black community the way I was taught, it's like, ooh, mm-mm. You have seven years that's going to be on your credit. You better not. You, <laughs> for them, they do not care in that same way, yeah. right? Filing so bankruptcy do, do the is seven smart years not apply to them? Hold on, Omi, because you're saying something. I actually grew up in a household with a father that had a similar strategy as Donald Trump. His name was Donald to my father's name. So I, I learned some things, but I, I found it for me personally, there's something dishonest about going bankrupt because you are not paying people what you said you were going to pay them and they're losing, but you get to walk away with everything. Now, sometimes the victim is the bank. And in that case, most of us don't care about the banks losing money. Right. 
But sometimes in the tr- case of Trump, he didn't pay vendors. Yeah. These are regular hardworking ass people that didn't get their money because this guy um, used bankruptcy as a as a business strategy that you're right, didn't affect him at all to get the next loan like you and I couldn't get the next loan with a bankruptcy on our. So so there is something about even though the, the computer spitting out the numbers, they know we're black. I don't know how they know it. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but it's wild that I large language models a, <laughs> told yeah, them that we black. Lo- oh, my key. goodness. Um, so 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 how do we how do we hold a, I don't know I don't oh this is so frustrating I don't even think it's right. a, a holding right. people accountable thing though Karen because the idea that bankruptcy is bad is actually very much a Western sort of American ideal too because what the way other cultures oftentimes think about it is that the price is always negotiable until the price has been paid. Right. And so when I when I learned what? that in B school, wait, wait, say more, more. Are you say more. the say price more. is always negotiable until the price has been paid. Right. So there are people who say, oh, I know I wrote that down in a contract and signed my name. But until you get my money, the price is always negotiable until the price is paid. And that is. And so this whole thing of like, you say you're going to do it. I got to do it. I'm going to mortgage my house to pay these debts because I want to be a man of my word because my word is my bond. And da, 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 da. That is very much a very american ideal western kind of thing in a lot of other cultures the price is negotiable until i paid the price i worked i worked with this guy and i i've always said that like when i get a minute i'm gonna write i'm gonna go he's out of prison now but i'm gonna go and write his memoir one of the only executives that was actually convicted in the mortgage crisis and one of the things that and i was on his jet when he said something similar to me and there's a quote somewhere uh, when he said it in court he said if somebody owes you um if somebody owes you uh a million dollars they have a problem right if karen if you owe me a million dollars you got a problem if you owe me a hundred million dollars i have a problem right So I if you owe me a hundred million dollars, I have a lot of incentive to figure out how to help you get to a place, even though you owe me a hundred million dollars to where you can help me recoup some of my hundred million dollars back. Right. So if you owe me a million dollars, I'm going to say, oh, since you got a problem because you might go to jail, you might do this. I'm going to take I'm going to take your house. I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. Right. But because I can survive probably without that, I may recoup some of that million dollars back. But anybody who owes you a hundred million dollars, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care if you're an institution or individual, you now have a problem and you are incentivized to help whoever that is that owes you that money. You're incentivized to help them. So the rules of business at the higher levels, I get why what you're saying on me is that it is it is different. Because most of the companies that are doing extremely well, you know, they do extremely well when they come out of bankruptcy. They clear the books. They take the they take the L's. They get everything clear. Delta Airlines is a perfect example of a company wow. that came out of bankruptcy and is now one of the most well run companies, most profitable companies in the country. The same with the auto industry. That that bankruptcy, that clearing of the books to do a second round. That's why they had to pay these workers so much money now because they've been doing so well for the last 10 years. No, oh, this is go ahead. Oh, go ahead on me. I'm sorry, because I want to pull out this hundred million dollars versus the million dollars thing. Cause I because come on now, we getting we getting at something today, Drew. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> let, let's talk about this because I want I don't want anybody out there to be mistaken on what you're saying, right? And this is where valuation comes into play. Right. This idea that you can sell or IPO, whatever, at this at some big number level means now I'm invested in getting you there in a certain kind of way, because now essentially now you owe me that hundred million dollars. And I think that what what Drew is getting at and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the what you're thinking about. If you're a person that can even owe somebody 100 million dollars, like if you're even at that level. What you're thinking about is nothing like what you're thinking about if you owe somebody a million dollars. Like your thought process 
where you're moving, who you talking to, where you spending your time at is nothing like a person at a million dollars or even a hundred thousand air. And I think that we forget that there's so many lives being lived. And now like, it, you know, social media apparently gives us insight to some of it. And we're looking at the glamour and glitz of it, not thinking, oh, this person never has to think about certain things ever. Like when people are surprised when Oprah Sarah's phone never dies and she carries her own avocados. You know what I mean? We're like, well, your phone never dies. Like what kind of battery you got? <laughs> right? It's like, it's somebody's job to keep her phone on deck. You know, it's somebody's job to roll every one of Snoop Dogg's blunts. Yeah. Keep him high. You know what I mean? Like, so wow. I think it's important for everybody out there to like understand that like, and so the question, how do you get there? How do you get to that level of thought? When do you enter into that realm? Most of the time is when you start making the, the le different levels of money. Yeah. Or I will say that I, I will definitely say that. I mean, um, I'm, I definitely think about the considerations that I'm making now in my life where, you know, I've had a modicum of financial success at work and in private endeavors. Um, I just think about just the things that I have to do with my prenup. We're just beyond my even thought process about what money even was 10 years ago. Right. It's just completely different. This is uh, so important because I feel like we've been conditioned to think the way I, you know, the way I think, quite frankly, and breaking free from the, the, the bounds, you know, the boundaries that have been placed, the strictures that have been placed on us as young people about what they aren't going to let us do. As opposed to imagining, I had a conversation today with someone. I was like, imagine what is it that you want? And their their conversation always started with what they wouldn't let them do. And I was like, <laughs> okay, let's let's pretend no one's there stopping you. What do you yeah. want to do? And it was they were like, I have to get back to you. I have to really think about it because yeah. they never thought about it. All I think about is all of the possibilities, all of the things that are possible. I never think about what can't be done. And I'm still running into some boundaries around just even having this conversation, paying back the debt and all of this. The notion of going bankrupt would devastate me. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. in my spirit, like it's a spiritual thing for me that I couldn't do. But I hear what you're saying and it makes absolute sense. It makes yeah. it, there's no shame in it. In this, I mean, yeah. my good. So what do we do with that? And if everybody you gotta think, could, you got to think about too, like some of these people, they're like, I I failed at marriage and I ain't shame of that. So you think I've I failed at wow. a business and I ain't gonna be shamed? Like I'm a bad father. Mm -hmm. You know, my, <laughs> I got a kid in jail or I, whatever the case is, or I got a kid that did this or a kid that did that. I ain't shame of that. That was on them. This just all I did was fail at a business. Okay, I ain't make a payment. I mean, so I think that the that their mindset that people's and and I think those are bad examples in terms of shifts in mindset because that that. that makes it feel yeah. like it's a negative thing you should but be i do ashamed think to be in a bad parent yeah because you should be yeah. ashamed of being a bad parent right. or whatever those consequences are but i think that the level of thinking about like what is it tied to my personal value of myself that's different for a lot of people they don't feel like it's a failure because they haven't been conditioned or um, or acculturated to think of it as a failure. I mean, in tech culture, one of the one of the best ways to get a job as a, a CEO in tech startup world is to have failed at a couple of other ones because people feel like you made your mistakes on them first two companies and them other people, and you're much smarter now, so you're not going to make as many mistakes on this one. If you read Startup Nation about like the startup culture in Israel. Um, which was a super popular book, probably, I've read it probably 10, 15 years ago. One of the things that page one is that failure is actual learning in that, in that book. And it talks a whole lot about like, you should be failing at things so you can learn the lessons from it and like log that so that like you will never make that same mistake again, right? So that means that you are now smarter today having failed than you were the day before you started and failed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I run my fingers through the head. 
she smiles and says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one